within a community or region, as long as there are no rivalries, no rivalries for resources or privilege. It's easy to get along when you're not competing to have something that's in short supply. But when the peaceful balance among different people becomes disturbed, the individualism or tribalism becomes territorial and it becomes defensive. In the best of times, we confess that there are some people whom we exploit or taunt. In the best of times, we're aware that we, we don't have a flawless track record. There are some whose lives are made difficult by our absence of love. Our society puts at a disadvantage people who are immigrants, people who are transgender, people who are poor, people who are less educated. And when an economic crisis or catastrophic event occurs, the ones who have been marginalized endure the greatest suffering. In the worst of times, our treatment of the ones who are at a disadvantage deteriorates. And our discrimination may become sharpened beyond bars, words, political actions, or edicts. We too easily demonize the others. And we risk the extreme opposite of love. Jesus recognized our vulnerability to the underside of our human behavior. He tried to put our spirits in such a place to be prepared for such moments when things beyond our control had set. Jesus tried to condition our first reaction to be one of love. When we love one another, we are less likely to engage in actions that are the antithesis of love. The students in Alliance Nebraska, they analyzed economic conditions, ethnic composition, natural resources, concepts of colonialism, totalitarianism, and civil war. We may simplify that field of inquiry to see whether or not we're vulnerable to remain on the paths of righteousness. A single question clarifies if we are in the danger zone. We may simply ask, is this an action of love? For Jesus, the litmus test was an imperative. Love one another. For our second hymn, please look at your insert, and even though the bulletin says God of the one who wouldn't say that for last. So if you want to turn to a mother lined a basket, um, Amelia, it's a new tune, so could you play all the way through those once and we hear it? Thank you.
sang it. Chocobet. And I think her name is mentioned once in scripture. Uh, and so the first verse is about Jacobet, the second about Hannah, and the third about Mary. Um, turn now, if you will, while you're standing, uh, to our statement of faith. And it's simply one simple question from the Shorter Catechism of the Westminster Statement of Faith. And so I'll ask the question, and being the knowledgeable Christians that you are, if you would answer it. What is the sum of the Ten Commandments? Ever since COVID, we have um, received gifts to the church online and through the mail, and we also have a collection plate outside the door. We not had the interacting of passing of the plate, but you are sharing your gifts, and so let us dedicate them to God. <clears throat> God of all creation, you offer us so many blessings for creating us in your image and entrusting us to reveal your presence throughout the world. We thank you. Create blessings, even miracles, through the gifts we now bring, that others may sense your abiding presence your extravagant love and gratitude and hope we pray. Amen. And now as we uh, lift up our hearts in prayer, um, one of the former students of Marlboro, Billy, um, I'm not going to give his last name because I don't know if he has given us permission to uh, lift him in prayer uh, publicly, but uh, Billy, uh, a student of Marian Lyons is in cardiac care down at Columbia Presbyterian, so I'll be lifting up prayers for him. Last week, we prayed for the friends and family of Chris, the, the school boy who was killed in the bike accident. And little did we know that in Sunday school, uh, royalty, who had been at church that day and was in Sunday school, royalty, this was her best friend who died. They would text each other uh, last text at night first text in the morning and see each other at school. So um, she'll be here next Sunday, but know that it's a, a particular loss for her. Um, let us pray. Eternal God, on this day we lift up mothers to you. You, O oh Lord, are the one who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Scripture has prepared us to recognize that by your grace, mothering takes many forms. We pray for mothers around us. For those who, like Jesus' mother, Mary, have been surprised by the unexpected responsibility of parenting. Remind us not so much of the circumstance through which children come into the world, but that they are always a gift from you. And help us to always see your image in them. We pray for those who, like Naomi, find themselves parenting someone outside the predictable patterns of mothering. And bless this day all grandparents, aunts, foster parents, adoptive parents, and kindly people who care for children. And we give thanks for those like Ruth who became, who become caregivers for their elders. Because the generations that need to be mothered in the seasons of our lives can change, we sometimes find ourselves mothering those who have even forgotten who we are. We take strength in knowing that you remember their identity when they no longer do. And grant courage and strength to all those who provide care in your name. We pray for those who, like Hannah, have struggled with the task of letting go of a child. Teach us to support our children 
even when the calling of their hearts does not meet our greatest hope for them. We pray for those like Mary or Rachel who have known the deepest agony of a child's death. Remind them again that nothing can separate their child from your certain love. Give strength and peace to those who mourn and those who cannot stop mourning. Despite our best efforts, families are breached and broken by death, disaster, or disagreement. Help us, like Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, to regroup our families in confident hope that in due season, wounds shall be healed and oneness restored. On this day we set aside to remember mothering, we also call to mind those men who are called to the vocation of mothering. Those who in the absence of another seek the heart of Mary or Rachel. And let us renew our commitment to uphold them this day. Loving God, the bond between parent and child can be the most intimate and nurturing of our lives and when this is our experience, it is indeed a foretaste of your realm. And to remember mothers on one day is not enough. So fashion in us a people who pray, work, laugh, and weep with mothers and children in whatever circumstance is most faithful. And for this we seek your grace and presence. And, O oh God, we give thanks for this community in which a closeness is felt that we take note of the challenges and joys encountered by the people in our midst. We pray, O oh God, for Billy, who is in CCU, created him a new heart, O oh Lord, and make it vibrant and strong. We offer all these prayers through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, and we offer the prayer taught also by our Lord, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will conclude our worship with God of the Word.
show the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the comfort, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. We are God's children.